Hi, I'm Dave, and today I'm going to be talking about a project addition that I'm going to do on my wireless laser doorbell. If you remember a few months back, I created a doorbell where if somebody tripped a laser, it would reach me in my lab by blinking an LED. Pretty simple, straightforward, a nice little project. However, I realized that I want to be able to see what's going on when maybe I'm not home. So for instance, if I was waiting for a package from UPS or USPS and I wanted to go to the gym until they came, I wouldn't be able to check the status of my door unless I was to come all the way home. So to fix it, I decided to put my wireless laser doorbell on the cloud. So let's take a reminder on what the project was before. It's pretty simple. We have a box here that emits a laser, bounces off a mirror, comes back into the sensor, uh, and then as soon as the laser's tripped, the LED goes off until either a minute passes or I press the button. Great. So let's take a look at what I did in order to get the system so I could receive updates on my phone. Basically, I used a Raspberry Pi and put that on my Zively account. Zively is a cloud data management program that runs online. It's awesome in that first it's free for developers, being anybody that signs up for a developer account. And second, it is uh, it takes care of all like the port forwarding and security issues that you might see if you wanted to run your own server in your house and then access it from your phone. Let's take a look at how it works. So from a user's standpoint, I'd have to log into my Pi and standard Pi login, no big deal. And then I start the command that tells it, okay, I am going to run this Python script and I pass to it all the key information from my Zively account. And I'll show how to do that all in the article. But once that's running, we go to our Zively account, and we have this stat, and it's currently at zero. Awesome. What's really nice is for a buck sixty, somebody created a Zively feed app for Android, and I can log in to my Zively feed right here, and it shows me the past few hours of what's been going on. So. If somebody were to come up to my house, they trip it, that goes high, that goes high, and then when I update this, I see true. So somebody was there. And what's really nice is it timestamps it. So if I was at the gym and I was sitting there every so often, I update it, saying, somebody been home? Is somebody there? Uh, oh, look, somebody came at this time. Or two people came, this person at this time and this person at that time. Really a snazzy setup. Uh, I'm really happy with the way it all turned out. And um, boy, I'm certainly lucky that for a buck sixty, somebody handles the Android portion. All right, let's take a closer look at each part. Now, before we go through the stages that I went through in order to make this system work, I should mention that there's an easier way to do it if I wanted to design it for cloud or Internet of Things to start. You know, you could have used uh, electric imp or I could have done something so it would be a more direct path from my sensor here to the cloud. But since I had this section in here all working between the XB and the Arduino and the Shield, I figured, well, let's use what we've got and then add to it. So if you want to review this stuff, I suggest you look at a post which I'll link to in my article. But all I did to modify it was to add a extra I.O. pin, so any time that the laser is tripped, this I.O. pin goes high. And then from there, this I.O. pin that goes high goes to the Pi. Now I had to put a resistive divider here because the output pin from the Arduino runs at 5 volts and the Pi likes 3.3 volts. So a simple uh, 1K, 1.8K resistive divider knocks 5 down to 3.3 and then that goes to a GPIO. Great. Laser gets tripped, this flashes, this goes, and we can see on our Zively feed 1242. Somebody came to my door and then it reset itself. Awesome. And there's the demo. Everything works. It's pretty simple. Thanks to Zively and that person who wrote the Android app, it made it 
so much easier for a hardware guy like myself to get into Internet of Things and putting data on the cloud. Uh, thanks for watching, and if you want to see all the documentation, it'll be available online at element14.com.